difficulties this morning um i was trying to upload the video that i recorded yesterday morning i was trying to record that video today and i was just going through it <laughs> final cut pro and i we just be battling it out um somehow i deleted everything I mean, I have copies of what I recorded in the iPad, thank goodness. Um, but, like, I spent hours trying to, so I'm, I'm kind of giving up on it um, right now. So we're going to take a, a break from our daily uh, morning routine. And it just started, I know. <laughs> Um, the video is going to be uploaded. I'll either upload it later this evening or tomorrow. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, do I have any water? I do. Um, so I just wanted this is this I don't know this I don't think this is gonna be a long video, but this is like an internal conversation I've been having for a really long time. Not so internal. One of my girls I've been having this conversation with as well. Um, I just saw a YouTube video. Um, I'll put the name of the female either in the video or in the video and in the description box. And apparently she's been on YouTube for a while. I saw she has over, I think, 179,000 subscribers. Um, so go girl, get girl. Um, and she was talking about, so I didn't even know anything about this. So apparently there's an H&M ad out there. I didn't see the ad for myself. I saw it on her channel. Um, I didn't read any of the comments that was underneath the ad on Instagram or whatnot. Just, I, I literally saw her video and then I popped on to here. And there's this beautiful chocolate skin girl with um like her hair in a pop actually her hair is pretty much like <laughs> how i wear my hair just her hair is just a little shorter um well her hair is shorter um and apparently um h&m got a lot of negative backlash because of that ad apparently people thought that the young girl's hair wasn't up to par um it wasn't neat it wasn't well kept um there was like a lot of um negative comments coming from people with the same complexion as her um and I'm not sure if any of the negative com uh, comments were from um people of different races or colors as well but what struck me about this is, <laughs> so just so you know, this is Let's Talk Season 1, Episode 2. I'm like, oh, this is the second episode right here. What struck me about here, I think I spoke to you guys just a little bit, just like, just a little bit about, um why I was hesitant to make hair videos, but I don't, I don't, I think I gave you guys just a taste of what my concerns were, but I don't really think I gave you guys the whole picture. And we really don't have time <laughs> to give you the whole, whole, whole picture. But um, one of the things that I went through, and I've, I've had this conversation with one of my girls, is um, I remember, 
how many years ago was this? Oh my gosh. Oh, has it been, it's been about five years, I want to say. I think, give or take, probably around five years since I've been going on my hair journey. Um, my hair has been many at many different stages. So my hair was bone straight relaxed at one point. Um, we went from bone straight relaxed to tech slax. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that or if that's still a thing. Um, but that's when you don't let the relaxer like really process your hair fully. Um, <clears throat> and for those of my cousins, nieces, aunties, uncles, and whatnot that's out there and who don't have a clue as to what I'm talking about, um, a relaxer is something that people who have highly textured hair so we have a lot of texture we have waves we have curls we, ha we have coils we have kinks those of us who have all this texture in our hair the way we get that texture out is by putting a chemical called a relaxer in our hair and what that relaxer will do is break the bonds in your hair sh hair strands so your hair will end up being straight so opposed to having all of this texture that you see here um, well, kind of see, um, my hair would be straight. Um, so you don't have to worry about this puffiness situation. You don't have to worry about hours of detangling your hair because your hair would just be straight. So where was I? So yes, I went from straight to tech slack. So tech slack meant that we left some texture in our hair so you can get a bit of a wave or whatnot. Um, to texturize, which is, I believe, the mildest form of chemicals that you could put in your hair to break down the bonds, um, to where we are now, which is completely natural. I have been... <laughs> the remarks I've received, the comments I've received while going through these phases... Even by friends and family, even by friends and family, it wasn't like really supportive comments. <laughs> and what's so funny now is, you know, I feel like everyone is going on like this natural hair movement now. So it feels as if a lot of people who have made these comments that weren't supportive, I mean, when I talk about friends and family, I mean, they weren't bashing me, but there were like comments that they was, like, I remember I had one friend and she was natural as well. I remember we were on the train. Oh, actually, she's made a few comments. I remember once we were on a trip together and she made a comment like, so you're not going to brush or comb your hair? Like she made a comment like that. And she wasn't trying to be malicious, but it was like, you know, you gotta do something with your hair. <laughs> and I remember one time when we were on the train going to visit my cousin, she made another comment like along those lines. And, you know, when you've been relaxed for like eight million and one years, okay, so that's an exaggeration. So let's break it down. When you've been relaxed for almost 20 years and you're deciding to make a transition to do something else besides have your hair bone straight, it's a lot. It is a lot. First of all, you have to like kind of change like what your idea of pretty is to you. For your hair. I'm talking about for your hair. It's to you. Um, because I remember it too. Before I, I, I even made the decision to um, just do something sh different. Instead of having my hair bone straight. I'm sorry if this is all over the place. Just I saw this female's video. And it compelled me to um, do this. Um, what was I saying? I'm sorry. I... I remember when I decided to um, make that decision, like my hair is bone straight, but I would see other females with all different types of textured hair and the 
crazy thing about it is I was able to appreciate these textures, like these text, um, textures, give these beautiful women compliments on their hair. But for me, like, I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> How crazy is that? Like, I was like, I don't know. And when my I finally started transitioning, you know, going through these different stages of my hair, like, it was really frustrating. And the reason why it was frustrating is because, first of all, I'm not used to seeing myself in anything but straight hair. Like, that's the only thing I'm used to. So just looking at this like new person in the mirror, it's like, oh, I don't know. And what made that even more difficult is I didn't have like support. <laughs> I didn't have support behind me at all, um, especially from, you know, people who look like me. <laughs> Like I think I think this I think my transition would have been so much different if I had people supporting me who looked like me but that's just that just it, that just wasn't my experience. And you know, I've always had friends and associates um that are other races and it's so funny because you know, to them it was nothing. It was like, "All right, you're still Sherry." <laughs> So I don't know if it was a sherry thing or if it's a black thing that like we just put all this emphasis on our hair because they're like, okay. <laughs> Some of them didn't even notice. They're like, oh, you did something, you're doing something different with your hair. Like it's not a big thing. But from people who look like me, and I'm talking about females and males, um, it was just like... <laughs> And it was a lot. It was a lot to go through. Um, and let's bring it like a little more recent now. Um, I, I, I I just realized that i um, been telling people that I've been natural for, I think, two years now, like fully natural. And I just realized that's not true. <laughs> And the reason why I realized that is because with my last trim, my hair never coiled. I, I did a video where I showed like a little Snapchat of, not a Snapchat, like a little picture of my hair texture. And that's, this, this is the first time my hair actually like coiled where you see like little coils, like it's an actual texture. Like, well, everything is a texture, right? But my hair has always been like zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. Um, never saw any curls, never saw any coils or whatnot until this year. And I realized, oh, I still had some of those process, um, I still have processed hair in my hair. And it was like weighing down um, the true texture of my hair um, because I've, I've never seen my hair coiled until this year, <laughs> like ever. And I was like, what is going on? What is that? And I got a little excited. I know I'm jumping off. I'm going all over the place with this story. Um, and we've already been talking for 13 minutes. Um, but yeah, um, let's bring it as recent as two, three years ago. Um, at this point, I'm completely comfortable with my hair. Completely comfortable, completely confident. I'm not having that awkward, like, who is this um, phase when I look in the mirror but I ended up working in a place where I kept receiving negative comments. And they were all from females. Negative comments. And I'm like... <laughs> and the way... Like, it wasn't... You know what? And to this day, I don't even know if they realized that their comments were negative or if they thought they were being helpful. <laughs> 
Because they would make comments, like, they would always make comments about my hair. Like, oh, you should do this. Oh, or you should do that. Or maybe you need to use different products. Firstly, I've never asked any of these females as to how to take care of my hair because I knew more about hair than they did. <laughs> Okay, so that was me being a little petty and shady. <laughs> but I I I I I I did know more about hair and how to take care of my hair and whatnot. But taking care of your hair doesn't mean having your hair in the most stylish way. Those are two completely different things. And I was at a point and I'm still at this point where I'm more concerned with taking care of my hair opposed to having all these fancy styles. And to be quite honest with you, if I want my hair in, you know, a fancy style, I'll probably just put on a wig. <laughs> I'll probably just put on a wig because I'll, I'll think to myself, I'm like, ooh, that style looks cute. But I think my hair will be more protective underneath a hair hat. <laughs> yes, you heard me. A hair hat. <laughs> My uncle told me that um someone was offended because that's how Emil described, you know, how he saw a wig. But I'm like, it is. <laughs> it's basically a hat with hair on it, which is why you usually see me with it on during the colder seasons, <laughs> opposed to the warmer ones. Um, but. It, yeah, but you know, they would always give these comments and when they would see old pictures of me, oh, well, what you could have done is this, that, and the other. There's no reason why your hair should look like that. You could, it, it was just like, and what's funny about that is um, even though this female, I don't think, yeah, 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 yeah her comments kind of sort of fell in that realm as well. One of the females ended up going, um, deciding to like cut off all of her hair and go natural and it's like those comments never happen <laughs> but you know me being the person that I am I, I'm not going to throw that in your face I'm going to be supportive um and what also kills me is that these females that I work with it, it, and take note that I'm saying females right now in this work here, because the guys could care less. First of all, there was, well, there was like one black guy that worked at the company. <laughs> he could care less. Um, the white guys didn't care. <laughs> like, I don't even think they noticed. Like, it's like, okay. <laughs> Um, all I could say is when we're talking, I, it's so funny. So, um, the black females who I work with that would, you know, make these negative comments, um, you know, sometimes they would gather together and I'll be there. I'll be present. And, you know, they would make these comments as to like, like how, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Well, I do know how to explain it. Just I don't want to be offensive on the channel. Um, basically talking about how other races just don't get it. And how they should. Now they didn't, they didn't say how they should get it. But like the implication is like, well, you should. <laughs> And you know, I'm always playing devil's advocate and I'm like, well, if this isn't someone's experience, this isn't part of someone's lifestyle, why would you expect expect them to get it? And I told them, like, I didn't grow up wearing um, weaves like sew-ins or wigs. This is something that's fairly new to me. I didn't start doing this until, you know, I was an adult. Um, there's a lot of kids who start off really early. That wasn't me. 
And I remember someone who I was um, seeing actually said, like, that's surprising that you're just now. <laughs> and I'm like, why? <laughs> okay, I see we're at 19 minutes. We're going all over the place. I'm sorry. Um, what's interesting enough about working at that place where I was working is the only negative lack I got from that workplace was from black females. The only positive, like uplifting support I got was from white females. They were the ones who were interested in my hair. They were the ones that was interested in, oh my gosh, how did you get your hair from to do that to this? <laughs> And it's funny because, you know, you'll listen to the female colleagues that I have. And and take it take take in mind, guys, I live in New York, so I do understand that this probably would be completely different in another state. Totally get that. So I, I felt that was important. It's important for me to say that I I worked in a corporate office in New York. In Manhattan. I think that's important to say as well. So just saying New York isn't good enough. In Manhattan. In Midtown. Um, so yeah. The white females were the ones who were interested. Um, the white females are the ones I got the positive comments from. The black females are the ones who were continuously bashing me about my hair. <laughs> And I just, I just find that so interesting because um, if you have them say it, well, at the place that they were then, I don't know what type of mindset they're in now or whatnot, but if you listen to them back then, it's like it's everyone else who has an issue with our hair. But you're the one bashing someone, the only person here who's wearing her natural hair. <laughs> You're the only one here n bashing the person who doesn't have a 32 inch long wig or weave on every single day. <laughs> and then what, what, what the kicker, the real kicker here is that that experience wasn't just at work. It was also when I was in my neighborhood. I remember going to this salon. <laughs> And it's not the first time that I've heard this conversation at this salon. Um, basically stating how, you know, the struggles, you know, we go through having our natural hair in a corporate setting. So I don't know how many of them were working at a corporate setting at that time. But I do know... I was working in a corporate setting and that I was the only one being bashed. I also know that the people that are talking right now are not wearing their natural hair. I also know <laughs> that there has been quite a few slide remarks about me in that salon about my hair. That's what I know. <laughs> I don't know what they're saying, but I know what that what I know. Um, so let's wrap this back up to the H and M picture. First of all, beautiful black girl, beautiful black girl, looking as happy as she could be, and she's receiving all of this negative criticism. Not even criticism, like negative negative comments. Because criticism is when you're trying to... Yeah, this was in criticism. And saying things as... And it kills me. People make these remarks and they... It's like, do they really don't have a clue as to how offensive these remarks are? At least these remarks would be offensive to me. Like, oh, she should have put some gel in her hair. Oh, she should have sleeked it back. Oh, she should have... Like... But Why? <laughs> but why? And I will admit, I will admit, I will admit, I'm not going to come off as being some type of angel. 
<laughs> but even though I, I wasn't acting or felt I was on the verge of acting like the people who were bashing me with negative comments, um, I did feel that there was a point, there was a point recently, probably last year or so, where I could have easily fell down that rabbit hole. And I'll explain. It's not exactly the same, but I knew I had to check myself. It was when, um, I remember, like, every here video I would see, um, you know, people would spend five hours slipping down their edges, making sure their baby hairs even though they're like 40. <laughs> I'm like, your baby ears are gone. So that's just me being funny. <laughs> Don't attack me. <laughs> you know, spending forever slicking down the baby hairs and whatnot. And I don't know. I just, I was like, why are you focusing so much on baby hairs? You don't have baby hairs. If you're an adult, you don't have any baby hairs. I don't understand this slicking down process. I was also upset. Um, kind of relates, kind of sort of, that anytime I would go to like a black stylist that they always want to like do this swooping. And I'm like, no, 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 stop. No, don't put any products on my hair. And I noticed that there almost came a point that anytime I would see anyone with their hair like slicked down, you know, I would, you know, I would kind of have an attitude. Why? <laughs> Why am I having an attitude? And I remember the moment that caught me that I checked to myself is that someone posted um, a picture on Instagram. It was of the same female. So one female with her hair in a high ponytail, um, just natural, no no um, products on the edges or anything like that. Um, and then another one with the products on, you know, so it can get that, you know, that swooping look that people like. I don't know why I'm always spitting at you guys when I'm speaking. And the caption said, both are beautiful. Both are beautiful. And I'm assuming it was a female. It probably was a male who did this. It, I'm Not that it probably was male. I'm assuming it was a female, but it could have been a male who did this post. I said, yes. All are beautiful. First of all, why am I having an attitude because someone's hair is slicked back? That's ridiculous. <laughs> So ridiculous but what I think it was is it took me so long and I felt like I was by myself ish I didn't have any physical people like around me to support me but I did join a few um hair forums so that that was my that was my support but my support was only there when I logged on um, outside of that forum, I just kept feeling like I was attacked, 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 attacked. So I think where the connection was is that, you know, I've been through all of these changes with my hair and I didn't have that support there. Nor was it anyone's responsibility to support me. So l let me throw that out there. Um, I don't, I don't think that during my, um, journey I felt like someone owed me support I didn't feel that anyone at any at, at, I didn't feel that at all but um you know it was hard it was hard and to stick to it because at any moment I could have said f this <laughs> give me those creamy chemicals right now <laughs> I could have said that at any moment but I didn't I just, I stuck to my journey. And when I finally came to a point, because I believe, I, I believe in faking it until you make it. I really do. So during this journey, and believe it or not, even my best friend, my best friend wasn't supportive during the beginning of this journey. And I'm not scared to say that because I know she's not subscribed to my channel. <laughs> So she'll never see this video. <laughs> but she definitely.
definitely was not supportive. And she definitely was one of the people saying in the beginning, in the beginning, you should do this, that, or the other. But she ended up, you know, th that's how she started in my journey. My journey was long. My journey's still going. Um, but later on in the journey, you know, she changed. <laughs> But I think because it was so hard for me and I finally came to, and you know what? It was when this texture started like being like predominantly on most of my um, head, hair, whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. That That's when I started feeling a certain type of way of people slicking back their edges and whatnot. That's exactly when. And I think that was when, or probably a little before then, I was like finally completely, com I, like I didn't care. Like I didn't care what people said. It annoyed me, but I didn't really care. It's like, this is what I'm doing. At the end of the day, I know more about, he I can't give you hair care tips. <laughs> like, <laughs> even though your texture is completely different than mine, I have done so much research. I have been through so much trial and error that I'm to a point where there are products that I can recommend to you regardless of what your hair texture is, especially since there was a point where I had so many different types of textures on my hair and I just wanted one product for like all of the textures. Um, but yeah, um, I'm I'm really I'm really happy that um that YouTuber brought up this article. I, I had I had no clue. I had no clue about the um I guess it's because I'm not on Twitter or probably because I don't follow that many people on Instagram that would be like I guess newsworthy, I guess, because I never know what's going on <laughs> out there. Or it could be because I'm a New Yorker. Like I this girl is from LA because they be having all the news about everything like I feel like here in New York we just mind our business somewhat <laughs> yeah but it it I know I rambled a lot um what I'll probably do is like edit this down so this can make more sense um I don't know, should I put a picture of the beautiful girl who was in the H&M ad? I think I should. I'm going to. Okay, all right, I'll see y'all.